I can hear you. All right, fantastic. So uh, today, I promise you are going to have an amazing session, right? Um, basically, we are here today to talk about getting started in cybersecurity, a beginner's guide. Getting started in cybersecurity, a beginner's guide. But before we dive deeply into this, I would love to know you. I would love to know where you are joining us from. So I am Chukwe Mecca, and I'm joining us from Lagos, Nigeria. I would love to know where you are joining us from so that I will know how to tell all this exact session to fit everyone's perspective. So in the chat box, just type in your name and where you are joining us from. Okay, let's keep it rolling. Right? Let's keep it rolling. Okay, I can see a couple of chats. Benga from Lagos, I will have IK from Asaba. All right, I'm still waiting for a lot of people to join us on this call today. So while we are waiting for them, let's get to know each other, all right? I can see King Archibald from Owere, Omotayo from Lagos, Nigeria, Charles from um, Jebode, Gosri from Lagos, Chizi from Abuja, fantastic, fantastic. So it's good to have you all here. So like you all can see, we are caught across the entire place that you can think of, right? We are everywhere. And this is one of the things that tech has brought us to be doing today. So I also love to know if today is the first time that you are joining us on this session, right? If today is the first time that you are joining Tonalities to have a session, just type a one in the chat box so that I will know the level that I am going to start this exact session today. But if you've been on several sessions before now, you can type in a two so that I can also get to understand you. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I can see a couple of one. Fantastic, I can see a couple of one, which means most people here, today is the first time that we are joining a session. Okay, amazing. So we're going to dive right into it while we wait for others to join us. Remember, we're here today basically to talk about getting started in cybersecurity, a beginner's guide. You've been hearing about cybersecurity, cybersecurity. How can you get into cybersecurity? And that is what we are here today to demystify, right? And basically, we are tonalities, right? For people that today is the first time that they are joining us on this call, we are tonalities and we are an education technology company that help Africans and help the Black ecosystem to get into the tech field. So what we do is we lower the barrier, the entry uh, criteria into the tech field and make it possible for everyone that desires to be here to easily join the tech field. And our, our services range over data analytics, financial analysis, data engineering, data science, financial analytics, HR analytics, Scrum, and of course, cyber security, which is the main reason why we are here today, right? And we'll have amazing facilitators that join us from diverse sector from Apple, from Microsoft, from McKinsey, from banks, from KPNG, Access Bank, Deloitte, and so on and so forth. And we have our students also working in these amazing places, right? So just be rest assured that you are at the right place because we are going to make sure that you understand all that you need to know regarding cybersecurity and all that you need to know regarding how a beginner can get started in cyber security. So we have Adeza Suleiman and Ephemena Ibro, who are the founders of Tenalytics, right? So if, I, if you can see my screen, you can see Adeza and Ephemena. So Adeza is an, a data analytics expert that have worked across so many sectors. He've worked in consulting, he's worked in edtech, in energy, in automobile. And he worked across many regions, Africa, UK, Canada, right? So he is well versed in this area. And that is Adeza, right? Adeza founded Tenalytics when um, he was in the field and he was not able to see like-minded black individuals that he can interact with and grow with. And that led to him founding Tenalytics. Also, we have Efemena Ibo, who is also the co-founder Efemena is a data scientist and he worked across diverse sectors, right? He worked as a power platform developer. He worked as a data engineer, as a data science. And presently he is working in Canada, right? And both of them have over a decade experience in education technology, right? And this evening we have an amazing person with us, Joshua. 
Joshua, I don't know whether you're on the call, whether you want to say a couple of things to people before I introduce you. Hi, Joshua. Hi, Chukwemeka. Thank you very much. Um, I'm Joshua. I'm a cybersecurity specialist, and I work with uh, Access Bank Group and also uh, design security policies. And I've also is, uh, deployed security tools like the SIM, DLP, and all of that. And working with STEM Analytics has been very, very interesting. Thank you very much, Chukwemeka. Thank you so much, Joshua. Thank you so much, Joshua. Like Joshua has mentioned, he is a cybersecurity uh, specialist from Access Bank, and he worked across so many projects. And today he's here with us so that we get to understand how we can get into cybersecurity, a beginner's guide. I am Chukwe Mecca, the CEO of Fortinalytics. Um, basically, I've worked across so many sectors, banking, fintech, capital markets, hospitality business. I've worked in governance, risk and control, which is partly cybersecurity, right? And basically, um, I have close to a decade experience in all these areas as well. And today, we are going to discuss things that are very, very, very important to us, right? And number one thing that we are going to be doing today is to understand cybersecurity and a beginner's guide to it, right? For us to understand cybersecurity and a beginner's guide to it. And also number two, we are going to be understanding the pathway to becoming a cybersecurity expert. So you want to become a cybersecurity expert this 2024, how can you make it happen, right? We are here to let you in on the gist so that we all can go together this 2024 and be able to you know, make impact. Number three is that we are going to be bringing forth our special offer to you. So by virtue of you being on this call, we have a special offer that was specially curated for you. And it's not for everyone. So just stay tuned and make sure that you pertain in this amazing gift that we have for you this evening. And number four thing that we are going to be touching is the analytics growth internship program that will enable you to have experience. You are going to work on live projects that you are going to have on your portfolio so that when recruiters look at your portfolio, they will know that you have the necessary skills and experience to perform. So remember what we said, we are talking about understanding cybersecurity and a beginner's guide to it. How many of us here before now has heard about cybersecurity? So if you heard about cybersecurity before now, just type a one so that I will know people that know what cybersecurity is all about and I will know how I will bring us up to speed to people that do not know yet. Amazing, amazing. I can see a couple of one. I can see a year from King. I can see a da Daniel. I can see Elvis. I can see Brala here. Amazing, amazing. So we've all heard about cybersecurity. That means we should just close shop. Now we already understand what we need to know, right? But uh, that's not that's by the way. So I'm going to paint a couple of scenarios, right? That will enable us to understand cybersecurity fully, right? I'm going to paint a couple of scenarios that is going to enable us to understand cybersecurity fully. Okay, so I have on my screen a little story, right? So just walk with me so that you get to understand where we are. Now, she often looks for new softwares and tools to enhance her workflow. One day she comes across a website offering a free trial of a public popular graphic design software she's been wanting to try. Let's just put a scenario, you want to use Canva, right? And you notice that Canva for the paid version um, is not really, uh, you cannot afford it, right? And suddenly you, uh, you get to see a, you know, in your email, you come across an offering of a free trial for Canva. And Emily was excited about this opportunity. So she quickly downloads the software from the site. Unknown to Emily, the website she downloaded the software from was not legitimate, right? Instead, it was a malicious website set up by hackers to distribute malware disguised as legitimate software. As Emily installs the program on her computer, she unknowingly introduces a malware into her system. Shortly after installing the software, Emily starts noticing strange behavior on her computer, files begin to disappear, and her system slows down significantly. Eventually, her computer crashes and she's unable to access any of her work files. So Emily realizes that she has fallen victim to a malware attack where cyber criminals exploited her desire for 
new software to infect her computer and compromise her data. In this scenario, Emily lack, Emily's lack of caution when downloading software from unverified sources led to dire consequences for her work and data security. I don't know if we think Emily did the right thing, or if we think, is there things that Emily should have done to prevent her from installing malicious software on her PC? On daily basics, we all make use of systems or phones or anything. And right now, I'm sure we all have um, two-factor authentication on our WhatsApp, on our Instagram, on our apps. We all have two-factor authentication, right? And that is us practicing cyber security on a minimal level without knowing it, right? So we all are cyber security experts, even though it's still at a minimal level, but we are practicing what cyber security experts do. Right, scenario two is basically about Samantha, right? So Samantha is a social media person and she uses Instagram. On a daily basis, we all use Instagram. And we've, ha we've heard stories of people losing their accounts on Instagram, right? How do these things happen? What made them to lose their accounts? So let's paint the scenario with Samantha. She follows her favorite um, brand and influencers to keep up to date. Then one day she receives a direct message from what appears to be an official account of her favorite clothing brand, right? So let's assume suddenly one day you, you are receiving a discount from um, Miss K. So if you're in Lagos, I'm sure you know Miss K for the ladies here, right? So you are receiving a discount code from Miss K, right? And you are excited about that discount. So you clicked on the link provided in the message, which takes you to their website that looks identical to the brands that you officially patronize, right? And you've logged in your details, you put in your card details, you put in uh, everything so that you can claim the past or uh, the discount, thinking that it is the authentic um, shopping um, platform that you are on. Then unknown to you, the message was sent by cyber uh, criminals who created a fake account to mimic the brand. On daily basis, we all see several accounts created on IG, on all social media platforms, on Twitter, trying to mimic the original accounts, right? And we can fall prey to what cyber criminals do if we are not careful. So shortly after Samantha um, imputed everything, she noticed that unauthorized purchases were made with her card and everything that she stored, she realized that she's falling victim of a phishing attack. In this regard, cyber criminals exploited Samantha's trust and familiarity to her original brand to exploit her information, right? And this is how phishing attacks normally come up and how they normally look like. Now, Samantha has fallen victim of phishing attack. If you are just joining this session, please, um, my colleague Elijah and Lydia, they are dropping the attenders. So please try as much as possible to fill in the attenders so that you can get the, the recording of this video and also get the file, the PDF that we are using to teach. So we've talked about Samantha and Emily that um, fall prey to phishing attacks and malicious software downloads. Now, these are specific issues, specific um things that are, are peculiar to cybersecurity experts. And these are things that we are going to look at to see how can we get to block all these things from happening, right? How can we make all these things? How can we bring data security to the organizations? Now, lastly, let's look at this exact scenario. Now, most of us, uh, when we fly, or maybe when you find yourself in restaurants or hotels, you tend to log into the public Wi-Fi, right? And we have David here who travels frequently. So in the airport, he just um, saw the free airport Wi-Fi um, and just logged into it, right? Unknown to David, a cyber security, a cyber criminal nearby has set up the same exact Wi-Fi name with a similar name for the airport. And that's the one that David logged into. Now David started browsing, um, trying to you know do so many things. So as he is sending sensitive work emails and logs to his company server, the cyber criminal that opened that free Wi-Fi was not able to intercept all the data passing through the network. 
Now, or not today, David, David has entered the plane, he's flying, and by the time he's dropping off, by the time he's touching down on the airport, he noticed that a cyber criminal has exploited his trust and have logged into his work emails and captured the company's data. Now, all these are areas how we can fall prey to cyber criminals, right? This, these are things that, and on daily basis, there is always new ways that these guys are coming up to try and you know capture all our data. In any field that you are in, there's always need for a cyber um, security analyst, which is why we keep telling people that cyber security is a field that will always continuously be in demand, right? It will always be in demand. Now, do you think Emily Devin and Samantha could have prevented these attacks, right? Let me hear what you think. Just type in the chat box, do you think Emily, David, and Samantha that fell to all these cyber attacks, do you think that they could have prevented this? So just type what you think in the chat box. If you think yes, they can prevent it. If you think no, that they can't prevent it, just tell me so that I can see whether we are thinking in the same direction. Okay, Ibrahim um, Shala said yes, that he thinks Emily, David, and Samantha could have prevented these attacks. Adebayo Daramula said no, that he doesn't think this could have been prevented. Amazing, amazing. I like, I like the fact that we are having different, different opinions. Daniel Apanam said yes, they can. So I want to hear our thoughts. Let me hear what most of us on this call think. Let me hear what they think. Whether Emily, Samantha, and David could have prevented this attack. Okay, um, Zoom user said yes. EA Carly said yes. The attacks could have been prevented if they had basic knowledge of how to secure their online activities. Amazing, EA Carlo, amazing. All right, so David, Samantha, and Emily, yes, the attack can be prevented. It is unavoidable from Charlie vibes. So we are going to continue. So amazingly, yes, the attack could have been prevented, right? Right? This can could have been prevented, and that is with the help of cyber security. So anything pertaining to cyber uh, attacks, what cyber criminals are hitting on you, phishing attacks. Um, malicious where, uh, software downloads, this could have been prevented, right? And Joshua is going to come up to talk us through how this ca could have been prevented. Hi, Joshua, you have the time now. Joshua, are you there? Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Chukumika. You've done a wonderful introduction, and that was a fantastic uh, one there. And uh, good evening, everyone. I believe we are uh, catching up with the flow. Yeah, so I'm just going to be explaining um, the cybersecurity concepts. I, you know the scenarios uh, we've all listened to, the three different scenarios, Emily, David, and Samantha. They, so they could, have, they could be anyone. They could be a colleague. They could be our brothers. They could be our family. They could be our friends. You understand? So I have met people who say, ah, it will be very difficult for me to get uh, uh, hacked because I don't have any online identity. I don't have any social media profile. So nobody knows anything about me. And what I tell them is that those, uh, you think you don't have an online identity, but you have an offline identity. As far as you are communicating, as far as you are sending information in one way or the other, you know, as far as you are making use of phones, as far as you are making use of SMS. And recently, uh, phishing attacks and social engineering attacks, according to uh, statistics and uh, FBI investigation, they have recorded the highest number of uh, successful cyber attacks so far amongst all other forms of cyber attacks. So, so don't let us just uh, look at it and say, okay, because it's a phishing mail or it's social engineering, they, they ought to have detected it, no. So this is why cybersecurity is very, very, very important. So what is cybersecurity generally? 
So from from my own perspective, I'll say cybersecurity is a way to protect individuals, to protect organizations, and to protect the government at, at large. But when you are protecting this category of people, they make use of some things, you, you know. So that is why the slide is talking about is a practice of protecting systems that the individuals make use of, pro protecting networks that the individual make use of, and data from digital attacks. So these people, the individuals, the organizations, and the nations at large, there are different categories of people that eventually need cybersecurity. And you know, as uh, technology is rising every day, we need, um, what's it called? The advancement in cybersecurity. So as technology is evolving, as we are having new updates from technology side, new innovations, they also, as every innovation is un uh, unveiled, there are some flaws, there are some vulnerabilities around it. So that's why cybersecurity will continue to be a very relevant uh, discussion, you understand? So, so just allow me to share my screen. One second. All right. So now the various attacks that they could have been exposed to. You know, we are talking about Emily, we are talking about Samantha and the other guy from the three different scenarios, you understand? So the first one is a malware attack. You know, a malware attack can pop into your system, it can pop into your mobile device, can pop into any of your endpoints or assets or any uh, uh, workstation that you make use of, maybe personally or at, uh, at your organization or at your private firm, you understand? So a malware attack can be introduced through phishing mails, through mails that, you, you don't really know the sender. As a cybersecurity specialist, there are some red flags you will see from an email that will give you uh, an hint that, oh, this, this email is looking suspicious. You understand? So are the uh, Emily guy, the Samantha guy, are they exposed to phishing attacks? Of course, yes. You understand? So how do you even see a fraudulent email and pick it immediately? You know, immediately you see some emails, you just check the domains. Okay, the domains are like a sender or the where the account is hosted on. You understand? Just over your mouse around it. You don't necessarily have to click it. So when you over your mouse around it, you see the, the details of it and compare it with the one that is showing on, on the email that you've just received. You see there's always a difference between them. So the domain, the actual domain might, might be telling you it is abc.com. But by the time you over your mouse around the abc.com that you are seeing, you'll be seeing xyz, xyz, one, two, three, at, 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 and different, uh, different um, characters entirely. So that one alone is a red flag for you. You understand? So they could also be uh, exposed to MITM. I call this MITM. It's uh, popularly known as man in the middle attack because, you know, people not naturally, we enjoy free things and where we see free Wi-Fi password, uh, free Wi-Fi or public Wi-Fi, hotels, airports, lounge, and all, all of that. We always like to make use of them, you understand? But the vulnerability there is that some of these public Wi-Fi addresses may have been cloned and cloned in such a way that, okay, he said, let's say the actual name of the public Wi-Fi you are using is ABC underscore underscore one two three dot com and you are seeing abc iphone one two three dot com so it might just take a little change and for you not to even notice sometimes they even copy the exact name of the public wi-fi and you mistakenly or erroneously click uh, click on the fake one and you try to log in and you are using your uh your your personal system or you are using a system that belongs to a certain organization, you understand, and all of that. So that alone, as you're entering your credentials to your social media profile, you want to check what's going on, you want to get updates and all of that. Someone is already picking all of those ashes as you're entering the password, as you're typing one, two, three, four, five. Someone is already seeing one, two, three, four, five that you're, that you're typing, you understand. So that's, that's a, a very serious uh, form of attack. Now, what are the few cybersecurity practices they can implement? So are they being these guys are cybersecurity analysts or they are they are not even analysts, but they are cybersecurity enthusiasts or they know little 
about cyber security, the first thing they would have done is to ensure they have a firewall. You know, you can install a firewall that safeguards your network by filtering what goes in and what goes out. You understand? So these are the kind of uh, things they can do. You can also install Onipot dummy on computer systems to attract attackers while the real system is defended. You understand? So we call it Onipot, Onipot uh, technologies. You understand? So these are the kind of uh, uh, implementations or drills that a cybersecurity specialist can implement for maybe the organization or for your own private firm. You understand? So when you are also using passwords, just make use of alphanumeric password and not only alphanumeric password, you can make use of passphrase or paraphrase. You understand? Make use of a phrase and change the letters to number, change the number to, and ensure that it meets the password complexity uh, criteria. It should be minimum of eight characters and 15, eight to 15 and above, you understand? So make use of antivirus software, uh, make use of emails from unknown senders and all of that. So all of these things does not guarantee 100%. Even uh, the the advanced uh, OEMs, OEMs, I mean, uh, original equipment manufacturers of IT solutions, they still get attacked. Microsoft still gets cyber attacks. Uh, Amazon still gets different kinds of cyber attacks. So where all these tools will help you is in detecting them and making uh, proactive decisions. Because based on past scenarios, you can predict the kind of uh, attacks your, your uh, hackers will, will like to you know, we like to tap into. So it does not only really give you the hundred percent. That's why cybersecurity specialists, cybersecurity analysts, cybersecurity engineers are always needed to fine tune these tools, to make use of these tools, to analyze what okay, what this tool has been able to detect. You understand? So we have the IDS, we have the IPS, we have intrusion detection system, intrusion prevention system, you have EDR tools, endpoint detection and response solutions that can help you. Uh, look at all these things and detect it at a glance. You understand? So that that these are just a few practices they can implement according to the scenario. Yeah. So I think we can we can move. Yes. Yeah, so so organizations also experience cyber attacks. Yes, I mentioned this earlier. You know the kind of uh, cyber attacks they receive daily on a daily basis, depending on the industry they find themselves. We get APT. APT is advanced persistent threats. You, you understand? Acts, hackers are trying to gain access to a network for a prolonged period of time. You understand? So they try and try and try. So that's why you get some kind of scans. You just discovered some unknown IP addresses, some, some kind of strange uh, IP addresses. As a cybersecurity analyst, when you see there are some uh, red flags you see, when you see those kind of events, there are some certain steps. Hi, Joshua. Hi, Adam. Can can anyone hear me or Joshua? Okay, I think we lost Joshua there for a while. Okay, so um, basically what Joshua is trying to say that is that we have issues like this also coming up in organizations, right? So the same way individuals experience cyber attack, that's the same way organizations also experience cyber attacks. And the truth is that they even experience it on a larger scale, right? Because on a day-to-day -day basis, um, hackers are trying to get into um, financial institutions so that they can have access to your money. They're even trying to get access into uh, maybe um, hospitals so that they, they can blackmail you with your hospital record. So they are trying on a daily basis to get into all these organizations and that is why it is very very important for organizations to be able to protect themselves with respect to cyber attacks joshua i don't know whether you are back joshua are you there now absolutely thank you very much yeah. all right so 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 apart from ddos we also get sql injection attacks okay these are specifically attacks that are targeted towards your database you understand you know the database is like the art of your application so whatever uh, resides in your database uh, uh affects your application size so these are the kind of uh, cyber security attacks they get 
on a daily basis, big organizations and all of that. So it's a big challenge for organizations. This is why cybersecurity specialists, uh, the job roles, the, uh, their job vacancies are on the rise. They are on the rise. Recently, I just read uh, that Zambia, uh, was it last week or so, that uh, they've been attacked, that they uncovered some syndicates. And these guys are from the Chinese. They were already in their country. They employed uh, young people from the age of 20 to 25. And guess what they've been doing? They've been calling um, unsuspecting citizens of Zambia. They've been calling them, telling them, uh, okay, we are bank employers. We want to help you. Your ATM is having issues. Just send us your uh, password. Or click on this link and all of that. And they've been getting serious uh, debit alerts from different uh from different uh angles and when the criminal investigation guys would uncover them they saw that they were syndicates of chinese guys cameroonians and they already they have a company that they are operating they have uh young people that they're operating so they created a script for them and they were just reading out all these scripts see uh you know calling people and immediately they use a particular number they change the number and all of that and you know we've we've gotten those kind of uh scenarios in nigeria here yeah. but based on the cyber uh resilience cyber security experts and the actions they were uh, that the expert took us at that time we were able to drive them away because we we're able to encourage the customers we we're able to create security awareness and all of that for them so these are the things that cyber attacks will continue cyber hackers will continue to do when they discover that you, you've gotten their footprint in a particular location they move to another location so that is how they operate so you can see how very very important cyber security jobs and cyber security rules are there in the industry yeah so i think we can move to the next one yes yeah. so this this is a very this is a very interesting one for me it's a very interesting part this speaks to multiple rules that exist in the cyber security field multiple rules that exist in the cyber security field so as a cyber security specialist you can also be an ethical hacker so what is your job as an ethical hacker you can all you need to do is identify vulnerabilities and immediately you can pick that there's a weakness in this particular application or there's a flaw or there's it could be not it could uh, not only be the application it can also be a website or a program that someone is trying to develop in your organization. You can be working with your DevOps team. You can be working with your app managers, uh, developers, and all of that before they go live with the application. Uh, going live means before they launch their uh, applications or be before they've written so many codes. You, you, you know, you as uh, ethical account, before they even do all of that, you can try to identify flaws. You understand do some VAPT. VAPT is vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. And when you identify all these flaws, try to resolve them, give recommendations on how it can be resolved. You understand? So another role is a security architect. These are the guys that design robust security structures from the foundation, right? Uh, from the foundation level up to the uh overview, up to every aspect every domains in cyber security ensuring that there's a security tool that is in place for every form of cyber attacks so those are the security architects then we also have the information security manager this role is a very important one because when you see a uh, SOC, SOC is security operations center you know we have four different levels in in, in SOC. you know it's not even captured here but that is another role that's another fantastic role in in, in the cyber security industry we have the level one analyst we have the level two analyst we have the level three we have the level four so the SOC one are the ones they call them incident responders or security analysts you understand so the level two are like the ethical hackers these are the penetration testers the level three is your um um is your uh, escalation point. It could be your forensics department. It could be any form of uh, um, of anything that has to do with root cause analysis. Why level four is usually considered as the SOC manager. So the information security manager are the ones that, that um, manage all security rules, security policies, security reports. You know, you, you'll be interfacing with your management team 
You'll be talking to your CISOs. The CISOs are the chief information security officers. You'll be having engagement with your CIOs, chief information officers, or CTO, or chief technology officer. You understand? So these are their roles. These are the things they do. They also advise based on a uh, security trend that is going on in their industry or in their country. They will give the best kind of advice that the uh, company can also take. You understand? So uh, we also have the cybersecurity engineer. You know, we have uh, on-prem infrastructure and we also have cloud infrastructure. So as a, as a cybersecurity engineer, you should be able to develop cybersecurity solutions, both on-prem and on the cloud. And this is their role. We have the network security engineer. And these are the guys that make use of the Metasploit. They may ensure that their network security system is clean. There is no vulnerability on that level. You know, anything that has to do with, that has to connect over the internet is properly managed. And what are the kind of security tools you can use as a network security engineer and all of that. So these are, these are the functions of uh, the network security engineer. And the, uh, uh, the, CISO is like the top role, is the highest role in the cybersecurity field. You understand? This person is entrusted with the overall security of an organization, and they usually report directly to the MD. They report directly to the owner of the businesses because they make this, the final decision on any cybersecurity policies. And their major, their major work is to create, make sure you create a security policy that fits into your, your company. You, you understand the kind of employees you have, you understand the kind of uh, products you are selling and services. So you look at all of that and create security policies around that. You know, during the COVID period, we, we have different forms of BYOD policies, bring your own divide policies. We have uh, WFH, that is work from home policies. We have remote work policies. These are the rules that the uh, CISOs are going to be creating. These are the kind of policies, security policies they are to create and ensure that the organization is in tandem with all of that here. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll move to the next one. Yeah, so now this is a beginner's guide. A beginner's guide. So, so this is where I'll be taking you through uh, this journey. You know, 10 Analytics is a fantastic uh, learning platform that will help you no matter for uh, take for example uh i studied mathematics and statistics and immediately after my graduation i didn't even jump into cyber security i was into uh, uh telecommunications doing contact center support picking calls nine to five you understand from nine to five was time running shift doing it two four seven explaining calling taking calls from customers i i, I do uh um that job for up to a year i was speaking because even when i when i sleep i can easily uh, pick any call and attend to any customer and the good evening joshua speaking i may I be a helper we need to do this and all of that so but that is that did not uh debar me from getting into the cyber security field so i got an opportunity to work with access bank where i learned uh different banking um concepts different banking framework and all of that. I know everything about banking. So when it was time to be posted, I was just thrown, I, I, I made some uh, inquiry that I don't really, I just want to go into cybersecurity. I don't really know what to do uh, in that field. And someone advised me that I should just take uh, take the, the course, take cybersecurity field and try to even look at platforms, look at uh, different ways that you can improve on yourself. And let me tell you, since I joined that field, I've been learning and I've been having different uh, insights. You understand? One very good thing about cybersecurity is the more you learn, the more you want to learn more. Because as you are learning uh, something about application security today, you'll be getting new updates on them. So that is why 10, anal uh, uh, 10 Analytics is here for you to help you, to guide you, no matter what your background is. So it is not compulsory. You have IT background. It's not compulsory. If I have people that are into law, that you know they transition from law into cybersecurity and they are doing fantastically they are doing well they are doing great so another uh, area is build practical skills you know why on this uh, journey with 10 analytics we have platforms we have hands on labs we'll be having different kind of labs that you can as an individual can you you can even set it up 
personally, you, you understand, who help you to set up home labs, even after the training, even while you get a fantastic cybersecurity job, you can still be using these home labs personally to, you know, to run different kind of simulations to see how it works in the real life scenario, you understand? So we'll be making use of tools like Wireshark, uh, Bobsuit, Kali Linux, uh, you know, security tools that will help you, that people make use of on a day-to-day -day basis, you understand? So this, these are part of the journey and the beginner's guide. Yeah, please, you can move to the next slide. Yes, yeah, so the third one is networking. You, you know, we'll be meeting different uh, people from different fields. You know, by joining the 10 analytic cybersecurity class, you you have the opportunity to meet up to 30 from 30 to 50 people from different uh, parts of the uh, of the world, from different uh, networks, from different fields. You understand? You can also join online communities like cybersecurity forums, LinkedIn groups, uh, you know, professional uh, cybersecurity uh, handles that you can follow on Twitter that will also recommend for you, you, you understand? So it's going to build your networking uh, uh, skills, like to meet with people and you have the opportunity to even chat with people, you understand? So, uh, you know, that is what cybersecurity does. You know, we have a community where we learn every day. You know, when you see new updates, new trends, like the scenario I just painted from Zambia is from one of the communities that I, I joined, you understand? So you get you get up um, recent security trends, you understand? Then the fourth one is internship and volunteering, you understand? So you seek internship or entry-level positions to gain reward experience, you understand? At times, company hire from their pool of interns. It's not compulsory. You start with uh, an expert job or an advanced level job. Or, but if you meet the role, if you fit in, you can start with that. But it's always advisable to even start as an entry level position or intern. You understand? Ten Analytics will provide you with the platform that you need to scale up. It, it, it's a very uh, uh, fantastic one. You understand? So we'll contribute to open source projects related to cybersecurity. This not only uh, demonstrate your skills, but also provides opportunity for collaboration. And these are what uh, uh, employers are looking out for. You understand? People that are ready to contribute even before they get paid. You understand? So these are what the analytics will help you in achieving. Yes, please. We can move to the next one. Okay. So an, another very important area is um, develop soft skills and stay informed. You understand? So we can have different cybersecurity professionals. Like, for example, in my field, I know we have many uh, cybersecurity experts, cybersecurity professionals. But what will make you stand out is your soft skill. You understand? How to manage people, how to explain concepts to non-technical stakeholders, how to sell security tools. You understand? How to engage people to let them know that, okay, this, these are cybersecurity flaws, not making them uh, look very stupid. You understand? But just trying to explain to them, trying to bring them up to speed. You understand? Stay informed about the latest cybersecurity threats and vulnerabilities. So these are the kind of uh, skills that 10 analytics will also be providing for you. So this knowledge is crucial for interviews and for day-to-day -day work. Thank you very much. All right. All uh, right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Joshua. Hi, um, Aimoa. Aimoa, are you there? Hi, Aimoa. I can't yeah. share my screen. I don't know what just happened. Hi, Elijah. Hi, Lydia. My screen just went off. Please, if you can hear me, just uh, confirm that you can. Hello. So thank you so much, Joshua. Joshua has walked us through a great deal of how we can get started in cyber security. Hi, Lydia. Please reach out to Elijah. I can't share my screen. I don't know. Oh, okay, yeah, it's coming back up now. All right, thank you for that. If... Okay, so uh, Joshua has walked us through a great deal of how we can do all this thing, right? So before we move on, Joshua, I know you wanted to be able to you know, show us a small demo. I see yeah. there, Joshua. Yes, please. I would love All to. right, so you have the floor right now. Yeah, yeah, if you're still following us up to this moment, please drop a one so that we know that we are talking to people. If you're still following us up to this moment, please just drop a one in the chat box so that we can continue 
and be able to know that you are following us. Okay, so please just drop a one, just drop a number, just drop a fire in the chat box so that we can know that you are still here with us. Fantastic, I can see a couple of ones, amazing. All right, Joshua, I have the floor, please fire on. All right, thank you. Please confirm if you can see my face. I'm turning on my video right now. Okay, amazing. It's good of you to show us your face, finally, Joshua. Okay. Thank no, you. No, it's not yet up. Okay, it's not yet up. Okay. Okay, yeah, we can see you right now. Amazing, amazing. We can see All you right, now. Thank you. All right, please go ahead, Joshua. All right, so before we uh, get into some uh, lab sessions, just to showcase one or two things, uh, it's also important to know there are some beginner-friendly books on cybersecurity that can help you to kickstart this journey, you understand? And the, the one, one of them is Eat, Sleep, Cybersecurity, Repeat. You understand? You can get it on Amazon stores. You, you know, these are books that give you a background on what to know. You understand? Starting a career in cybersecurity, you understand? So what I tell people most time is that just make sure you get resources, you get books, and as you spend more time in it, you begin to see all these concepts as a, a normal day-to-day -day activity, you understand? So, and also it's always very good to have a networking background, but these are the things that 10 analytics will help us in achieving. Another book is Cybersecurity for Dummies. We have uh, Akin, a beginner's guide, Cybersecurity for Beginners, Practical Malware Analysis, AWS Penetration Testing, uh, practical paranoia, Mac OS 11, security essentials. So these are different books that can help you to get started. Yeah. All right. So I think we can move to the next one now. Yeah. So, and these are some uh, interesting uh, blogs and handles on X that you can follow. You understand? Uh, I've listed them here. We can also share them with you maybe after uh the, the session or the master class session so these are uh, important uh uh handles that gives you a, a blog featuring webcasts and it security video programs you know it gets up to date uh, analysis of security trends security incidents you get vast in it you, you understand so uh, some of the interview questions you get are usually related to okay what's what's going on in a, Maybe you are applying for a role in Germany and you just ask, okay, what's going on in Germany in the cybersecurity space or which country are you currently applying from? Okay, you're applying from Canada, you're applying from Nigeria, you're applying from... So they want to know what's the current uh, security incident that has happened, you understand? So following all these um, handles keeps you... Uh, there are more, but I just limited it to this. So they keep you informed, they give you... Uh, up to date information and all of that you understand so you can it's not necessary you follow all of them so you will not be too overwhelmed you can just pick like two or three you can scan through any of them and see the one that uh, fits what you're actually looking for yes yeah, so i think we can move to the next one now so what time is Okay, so I think we can move to the next slide. Hi, can anyone hear Joshua? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, Joshua, I can hear you. All right, all right. So uh, you, you can move to the next slide. Okay, all right, so let me, let's just go straight to the uh, Anson Labs. So it's just a simple, it's just a simple uh, test to see how our email addresses are doing, if our email addresses are fine, you understand? So uh, it's called, uh, have you been pwned? You know, let me share my screen from here.
please do let me know if you can see my screen it's popping up popping up yeah so this is the uh lab session and the url is abibingpond.com you understand so you can also practice this when you are alone so what what do you want to achieve we just want to check if our email addresses have been uh, detected for any compromise or maybe our passwords have been detected in some sites that have been hacked and you know there are some breaches and all of that you understand so i'm going to test with my own email address first and i will get different email addresses from the platform from the session you can just drop your email address on the chat and we'll just help you check if your email address have been pawned or have been um, detected in any compromised website. So let me start with mine. Uh, I'm going to use my Yahoo mail. Just your email address, that's all. We don't need the, the password. And that's so it's, it's searching. Wow, so this is the result. Good news, no punit found, no breached accounts, and no paste. Subscribe to search sensitive breaches. You understand? So this, this is the result you get. So let's see if we have anyone volunteering. Oh, nice, nice. Okay, let me start. Let me start with um let me start with techno. Okay, I can see I can lie, I can see Michael. All right. Oh, fantastic. Okay, let's let's start with um the Zoom user. So let's check. Okay. Let's check, let's check, let's check. Wow, good news. No punnage was found. That's a good one. Uh, so let's check. Let's check your email address. Okay, so uh, there have been uh, four data breaches and found no paste. Okay, so they found no paste, but uh, your email addresses has been found in four different data breaches. So what does this mean? So it means maybe, okay, you, you try to log in with your email address to a particular website or to a particular platform. Yes, to a particular platform that has already been compromised, you understand? So what you can just do is, first of all, there are recommendations here, but just make sure you change your password. Avoid using simple passwords like this, you understand? Avoid using simple passwords. So make your password complex, you understand? You know, what there's something we call password complexity, you understand? So you, you look at the number of characters in your password. Is it up to eight? Is it up to 15? Do you have uh, symbols in your password? Do you have um, characters? Do you have numbers in your password? Do you have uppercase, lowercase? Can you even create a, a paraphrase and say, okay, my name is Oye Bing Pei. I, I create something from it, you understand? Or I love uh, I love Bing Pei. From there, you can change the I to one. You can change the E to, uh, to number three and stuff like that, you know? Just play around your password. Another thing is ensure that you you make use of 2FA, you understand? Ensure you make use of 2FA and also ensure that you do not use the same password for different uh, platforms, you understand? You are using the same password for your Gmail, you are using the same password for your Facebook, for your Instagram, for your Twitter, you know, all of those uh, scenarios. Ensure you have different passwords for them. So this could be the uh, cost and it's 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 not a... <laughs> It's not a bad thing that it happens every day. You understand? So because websites get attacked, get uh, compromised every day. So it could be anyone. So let me just try to check another one. Taiwo Mac controller. Okay. Okay, let's see. Let's see. Okay, so this also has been pawned. So I wanted to say maybe the Yahoo guys are the safest, but oh uh, no, this this is another one. So just the same uh, thing I explained to um being paid. So it's the same uh, precautions you should take. First of all, just change your password. It means 
maybe your password is weak and all of that, you know. You know, there are also uh, URLs, there are also platforms where you can check your password strength. You know, uh, even apart from checking your password strength, security has gone beyond just password and username. You can enable 2FA, you understand? 2FA means two-factor authentication or MFA. It means multi-factor authentication. So you have different kinds of uh, security layer. Even if your username and password are very weak, you still need 2FA. You understand? And 2FA can be your OTP. OTP means one-time password. It could be your fingerprints. It could be what you have. It could be what who you are. It could be your islands and all of that. So it, it could be different forms of security. We also have uh, uh, tools that you can use to manage password that they can also help you. Instead of entering your password directly, it gives, it sends the password automatically to the website. So depending on how best you want to use uh your email you understand so let's check others i think we've only seen two or three uh, let's see chukwemeka let's see All right so this is okay good news no no panic fan so uh i think this is a good one so let's see another one this is a good one so it just speaks to um uh, I will make use of our email addresses, you understand? So this is another good one from God's will, you understand? So it, it does not mean because your uh, email address is clean today that it can't be hacked tomorrow. So it depends on how you use it and the platforms you register them on. So you remember I said nobody is 100% secure, you understand? So attacks every, happen every day. And just the first precaution, when you see that your email address has been pawned, First of all, change your password immediately. So this is also a clean result for Omotayo. Let's check for Godwin. Okay. So I'll just do like five more so we can move to the next uh, discussion. So Michael Godwin, wow, this, this is good. Okay, let's see for Jubril. Okay, so this is another one. So you can just ensure you change your password immediately. You can change it immediately after this session. Ensure you are making use of a complex password. Use paraphrase. Don't just make use of a word. Use a paraphrase. Like just say a word, a, a sentence or a short clause that makes meaning to you. Then change the letters. Change some of the letters to numbers. You can even include uh, parentheses, include some special characters and that are not really common. And you know, you can make use of password uh, manager tools, password manager tools that can help you keep your password. If you are the type that you have uh, up to 14 different accounts that you log into every day, you know, this password vault, this password manager tools can help you with um, all these um, kind of scenarios. So this is a Shagun. I think Shagun is good. Okay. So we've checked uh, Charles and all of that. So I think, let me just pick one more random, 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 random. Okay, let me pick this. I think I've not, so this, this should give us a clean result too. So let me just quickly give us a bonus uh, URL. Oh, wow, this is a uh, one data breach. Okay, okay. So uh, as, you, as I've said earlier, easy, just ensure you quickly, change your uh, email password, you know, ensure you are making use of 2FA on your password and ensure that you are not using the same password on your email and other uh, websites, you understand? So let me just give us this uh, bonus. You can check this on our own privately. So I want to encourage you to put uh, passwords on the chat so I will help you check, you understand? So you can just check the kind of, the strength of your password on this. So this site is secured. You understand? So let me just put an example of a password here. Okay, so let me just stop here. Oh, nice password. See the years it will take for it to be cracked. Can you see? 10,000 plus centuries. You know, that, that's not uh, possible. You understand? So this can just give you an hint on how... Uh, password complexity works. So you can just, let me drop the URL. Maybe uh, 
at your free time. You can just check it up, look it up, and uh, you know we'll be getting more of that in uh trainings and all of these uh, best security practices that can help us. Yeah. So I think uh that's that from me. Thank you very much, Chukwemeka. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Joshua. Thank right. you so much, Joshua. Please confirm that you can still hear me, Joshua. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Perfect. Absolutely. I All can right. hear you. Amazing. Amazing. If you are still with us up to, up to this stage, it means that there is something amazing that you are getting. We've briefly touched on how to check whether you've been pawned, whether your email has been pawned, or whether your password is something that can easily be hacked and how long it will take it to be hacked. Now we want to get into the other section to tell you how you can easily transition into this tech ecosystem, right? You want to get into analytics. How can you easily get into this space? Hi, Adam, if you are still there, please allow me to share my screen. Hi, Adam, please allow my second device to share my screen. All right, Joshua, um, I don't know, you can keep on why Adam gives me the host privilege also. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. All right. So um, basically, we want to walk you through the pathway to becoming a cybersecurity expert, right? What can you do for you to become a cybersecurity expert? All right. So... um. Joshua has touched on a lot of things that we need to know, right? He's touched on basically two sites that we can use for some of the tools that cybersecurity analysts use on a day-to-day -day basis. And I will walk us through the other area of how we can get started with these um, tools. How do we get started as a cybersecurity expert in this exact terrain? What and what do we need to do? to be able to say, okay, comfortably, I am a cyber security analyst. I don't need to, um, I don't need to explain who a cyber security analyst is anymore, because I believe we all understand who they are from everything that we've talked about today, right? So basically, in analytics, there are key areas that we are going to walk you through, right? And it starts with your introduction to cyber security. Right. So even if you have zero knowledge about cybersecurity, like uh, Joshua mentioned, the first level for you to the first beginner's guide for you is to have education. And the next one is to have hands on practicals. And these are things that we get to offer you here as analytics, starting with introduction to cybersecurity. So even if you have zero knowledge of who a cybersecurity is or what are the cybersecurity principles, we get to introduce you to this, right? So you also get that theoretical knowledge and also get the practical knowledge so that you can defend yourself anywhere you find yourself. So from that introduction to cybersecurity, we'll walk you through foundations of computing and networking, where you get to understand, okay, what is LAN, what is WAN, and then we'll move you to information security principles. Basically, for you to be an information security expert, what are the principles that you need to know? What are the CIA triad, which is basically confidentiality, um, integrity, and availability of um, information, right? This is basically the triad. It's like the foundation on which all the principles that you get to meet in cybersecurity is built on. So you get to understand the basic principles of cybersecurity before you now move into offensive and defensive cybersecurity. Offensive in the likes that you want to start practicing as a penetration text expert, that means you need to um, be texting maybe the website that has been built or application to see if they are vulnerable to attacks. That is what uh, in the secular words, uh, we call them hackers. But for you as an information security expert, because your only it will now be from the front of ethical hacking, right? You are going to be trying to practice if your company's website, your company's application, whether they are prone to, you know, being hacked. Then you also have the aspect of defensive cybersecurity, right? Where you get to, you know, build uh, control and security models around your company so that people cannot be able to hack your company. We now move you to cryptographic basics, cyber threats and attack vectors, 
network security, endpoints, web application security, cloud security, incident security and forensic, and then cyber security policies and compliance, where you get to learn the likes of ISO 27001, NDPR or GDPR, depending on the location that you are joining us from. So basically what this means is that our curriculum is fully packed that will get to walk you from ground zero to the expert level, right? So if you are scared that, okay, I have zero knowledge about cybersecurity, will I be able to um, survive here? You are rest assured that you are going to climb gradually from the ground zero to the expert level. And all these things, they are all practical based scenarios, right? We are going to teach you based on practical, right? There is one testimony that somebody was saying, and what the lady said is that she didn't um, have any technical background. She didn't study information security. That analytics was the um, education that she needed for her to be able to transition. And that's because, because we've tailored our, our curriculum to fit industry standard. Right, our learning timeline is basically four months, where you learn in three months, and then you intern for one month. What it means is that you get to also work one month with us and work with um, real life based data that we are going to give you. So you don't have anything to be worried about. You are going to be working with tools like VMware, Metasploit, Zap, Bobsuit, and Wireshark. And all these things were fully packed to make sure that we give you the necessary skill and tools for you to succeed. So if you can still see my screen, basically this is just like a roadmap, the journey to what you will be having, um, you will be doing in a class. First, we do introduction to cybersecurity, like I mentioned, foundations of um, computing and networking. Second week, you walk into information security principles and so on and so forth. So this is just like the, um, what the people in class currently are doing, people that joined in April, this is their own lesson plan. And that's how we've also designed the lesson plan for a 13 weeks program for you. So what are you still waiting for? Why should you exactly train with us, right? Why should you train with us? Basically, over the couple of years, we've had achievements that transcends and it echoes in industry, right? We have phenomenal achievements that have helped over 2,000 people from classroom into their first job across the globe, right? This is in UK, in US, Canada, Europe, Africa, of course, and Asia. This is a track record that we've maintained over the past four years that we have been operating. And like I also mentioned, we have industry standard facilitators that come from diverse places. You have people coming from, people like Joshua coming from Access Bank, people coming from, from Deloitte, people from coming from KPMG, people coming from InterSwitch, people coming from all manners of, like all the basic companies that you know, right? People that offer core value. And these are people that also design our curriculum to fit into what is obtainable out there in the real world, which means you don't have anything to be worried about with that you will be reading um, books. No, they are all based on real life case studies of what these people experience in their own roles, right? And we have a blended training model that accommodates your learning type. What do I mean by this? Our learning model is structured in a way that it is a life class. The way you are interacting with us right now, that is the way you are going to interact with your facilitator on your classes, right? you are going to be interacting with them one-on-one. -on -one. And then these classes are also recorded that even if you miss any session, you have lifetime access to the Google Classroom. And what it means is that you have recourse to always go back to the Google Classroom to watch the video. The way this session is recorded and is going to be sent to you after the classes, that's how our normal classes are also recorded that even if you have any core reason why you miss classes, you get to have the video to watch so that you can also come up to speed and prep for next class, right? We also have tailored sessions to tailor you for your first job, right? We've designed power pack strategies to help you to land your first job, which I'm going to talk more in our employability services. This is not all, right? We still have other things that we've provided for you under three basic approach to ensure 
that you get the job that is out there, right? We have the level one, which is basically the CV review sessions, right? So these are sessions where we get to look at your CV and make sure that it's tailored to the job that you are applying, right? So we have CV review sessions to teach you how do I apply to jobs, right? And the truth is that people has trivialized job application these days that and that's part of the reason why we are not getting jobs because we've made it like um it's just a game go to linkedin click on easy apply easy apply easy apply no if we continue to do it that way we are doing something wrong we have to tailor our cv to fit the job that we are applying for for example you have cyber cyber security skills and you um you have sql knowledge and maybe the job application is saying that, okay, we need someone that has post-grade knowledge. And in your own CV, you wrote, you wrote SQL, right? You've not tailored your CV to fit what they are looking for, even though it is the same tool, but the communication is different. And once it is passed through the applicant's tracking system, ATS, it's going to come out as failed because you do not have post-grade skills. So what we tend to do is also teach people how do I tell on my CV to match all the jobs I am applying for? It is not an easy task, but it is something that is necessary for you to be able to get there. Remember, your CV is just like a walking signboard of you. It's going to get there first before you can now come physically to represent yourself. Number two, we have LinkedIn optimization sessions where we get to teach you how do I optimize my LinkedIn? The last session that we organized, I think a friend of mine that, that is in one of the uh, sessions, immediately after the session and she applied everything that she learned, a recruiter reached out to her because she, she's in the UK. And she got the role, right? But she was not able to take it because she's still in class and she can't um, work above 20 hours because of the limitations in the UK. So these are things that we get to put you through aside the normal skill and competence training that we are going to give to you. Number three is the Upwork optimization. These days is the era of freelance, right? It can be in Nigeria, and you're working for a company in US, you're working for a company in Canada. Just as we all are here, people, some people in reality, some are in Canada, some are in UK, some are in Nigeria, some are in Rwanda, we've crossed, uh, uh, we are across the entire globe, right? And this is the beauty of what Upwork can do for you. So we have sessions to also teach you how you can leverage Upwork to serve as contractor in all this area and get remote roles. We also teach you how do you navigate the job market, right? How do you navigate the job market? We have job and interview prep sessions where if you get an interview invite, you get to um, book a session with us and we teach you, we have a prep session with you to teach you and let you know things that you are going to expect in that interview. Right? Do you, how do you even answer the question of um, tell me about yourself? Are you using the seat framework to specifically um, show and um, present yourself based on situation, um, achievement, and the type of person that you are? Or if they ask you who are you, I just going to say, oh, my name is Chukwemeka. I have twelve kids. I'm married to ten wives. No recruiter wants to hear that. So they want to hear who you are based on the seat framework. Right, and then we also provide recommendation and reference letters if some, uh, if in the future, um, someone uh, where you want to apply to, or maybe the embassy or any uh, of the tech um, career, um, you know, this, this is the era of people trying to leave the con uh, country. If any of them requires it, we also present recommendation and reference letters. Number two level is our weekly mentorship sessions. Right, so we have mentorship sessions where we get to bring people into the class to actually talk to you based on your own field. For example, if you are in the um, cybersecurity class, you'll be getting facilitators from cybersecurity field. Come into class to tell you, okay, which area of cybersecurity is even better for you to specialize in? Is it in network security? Is it in application security? Is it in um, website security? Is it in GROC, that's governance risk and control and uh, compliance? is in the aspect of incidents report. So these things are things that our weekly mentorship session also offers. And we also bring in people that have worked the work, right? People that have, oh, people that have worked the work, that's a nice acronym, right? We get to bring in people that have uh, worked the work, right? To tell you, okay, they were in class before you, 
this is what I did, this is what I did not do, and this is what helped me to land jobs. And I'll also provide on-the-job support. So if you get jobs and you are still, uh, you know, if you get jobs and you are struggling to, um, you know, stand firm on that exact role, we also get to give you one more support until you can um, cost easily stand. I think I'm getting a question from Elvis. True, I'm so confused on the part of several to focus on. Fantastic, Elvis. So these are things that we also offer on the mentorship sessions, right? Where we bring in experts to also talk you through the various aspects of these things that exist out there and how you can easily specialize. So number three aspect of it is our promise to you, right? If you confidently and comfortably do these things that we are going to provide for you, attend classes, attend CV review sessions, attend mentorship sessions. We guarantee you one job interview one month after you are done training with us, right? And we can comfortably say these things because of what we offer and because of the people that have partnered, partnered with us. So we have the likes of Robot Half, Havinash, and um, Adeko that, forward, uh, that have partnered with us for us to be able to provide them with some of our students, right? What it means is that after you are done with us, you are also placed in a pool, right? And once these recruiters come to us and say, okay, it's analytics, we need two cybersecurity uh, uh, experts. Can you guys provide these guys for us? We are going to provide people that have comfortably completed this program, com comfortably done everything that we needed them to do to our, our partners so that they can be interviewed and they can also get job placement. And number one, uh, number two thing that we also offer this 2024 is our body mentorship hub. Like I mentioned before now, we have people that have worked the work. We bring them back to class, that's the alumni that have done, that have passed through what they're currently passing through so that they get to also serve as body mentors to you. They get to explain to you, okay, I faced this challenge during my own time. This is how I navigated it. Right. Once you get to this exact end point, you are going to see this problem. Take your right or take your left. You know, the truth is that most of us, we struggled in this tech ecosystem because we never had mentors. Right. So if you do self um, transition or self study most times, you get to study everything that exists out, out there. You don't really get to, you know, see the exact pivoted points to transition through. And that's what our body mentors are there for. Some of us, we are struggling for two years doing courses, just trying to get into the tech ecosystem. But had we been, we had someone that held our hand to say, okay, Chukwe Mecca, learn Power BI, Power BI, learn SQL, learn Python, transition to tech. We wouldn't go ahead to be learning MongoDB, learning um, um, Luca. Anyone that comes out, we are jumping to learn. But then, is it what the company, is it what they are practicing with on daily basics? So these are things that body mentors come back to the class to give us to understand. And like I mentioned, we also have enhanced internship experience where once you are done training with us, you get to join our internship program where you are first of all reminded how to position your portfolio. So if your portfolio is not yet built while you are in class, the internship program is going to help you first of all, make sure that you set up your portfolio and then you start also working on projects that you can place in your portfolio. Let's remember, there is no tech employment, um, tech interview that you go for that they're not going to have a competence assessment, right? They are going to test you based on your skill. And this is some of the problem that we face while applying to jobs, right? We place the cart before the horse, right? And what does this mean? We try to get certifications before learning the skill, right? Maybe someone do not have any technical skill relating to cyber security, and you see the person studying to get CISA, right? But this person don't understand what LAN is, right? This is someone placing the cart before the horse. So you need to, first of all, get the skill and the competency, get the hands-on, and then get a job, and then, you know, start cont continuous learning, where you now get to start getting all those various certifications. So our internship program is going to position you for you to be able to uh, uh, you know, hone your skills, for you to be able to have enough portfolios that you are going to present to the recruiters so that at any point they want to look at what you've done in the past, 
you can comfortably present all the projects you've worked on, why in class and why in the internship program, so that you can easily prove to them that you have the experience that they are looking for. Now, we also have, like I mentioned, the freelance aspect where you get to work uh, as a remote um, person. So once you get the slide, don't forget, please fill the attendance form so that once you finish this call, you are going to get the recording of this session and also the slide. Okay. So all these things that I've been saying, how can you get into it? Remember, I mentioned that there is level four things that we're going to do today. And we are in the fourth part, which is basically, what is my offer to you? So at the moment, we are giving you a 33% discount, right? And this is an early bird discount for the first 20 people to join the program, right? So naturally, the course goes for $750, uh, 1,125 Canadian dollars, 730 euro um 625 pounds and 900 000 naira but because you've been on this call till now we have a 33 percent discount for the first 20 people that is going to register that means you are getting to pay 600 dollars 750 canadian dollars 475 euro 500 pounds or 600 thousand naira what i always advise people to do is to take advantage of this to get into the tech ecosystem let me let me tell you a story last last month we offered what we called international women's day discount and that was a 50 percent discount some people didn't register because oh i don't have money i'm going to register in april now coming into april that discount is entirely off it is now just a 33 percent off Right? And that is why I'm telling you to take this opportunity to get into the tech ecosystem. How do you make payments? So it's very simple. My colleague is going to drop the link in the chat box. Once you click on the main stack link that is provided, once you click on the main stack link that is provided, I'm trying to share my screen so that we also get to see how we can navigate this exact area. So once you click on the link that is provided, you are going to be, all right, my screen is coming up. Okay, it's coming up. I hope we are still following. Please, if you're still with me up to this moment, just drop a yeah, yeah, or anything in the chat box so that I will know that you people are still with me till this time. Okay, if you are still with me, please drop a yeah. Okay, confirm. Elvis, confirm. Uh, how do you pronounce this? 3W2039. Uh, oh, fantastic. I think it's the name of the phone. So amazing. So once you click on the link, it's going to bring you <clears throat> to this exact payment option. I think my network is slow. It's still coming up. It's just a minute. Just a minute. You can also try it with me so that once I'm showing you how to do it, you can be trying it from your own side and be making payments um, easily. So it's good. Is someone speaking? Okay. So it's good. It's good. Sorry, no, someone is interfering. Um, Adam, please do you mind um, blocking iPhone? Okay, I've muted iPhone. All right, so going on, it's going to bring you to this enrollment center, right? So what you're going to do is just scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and just look for the um, cyber security, right? Look for cyber security. Once you get that cyber security, you click on it, and then it is going to bring you up to where you can make payments. So depending on the country that you are joining us from, it's going to bring up the currency of that region. So if you're joining us from Nigeria and trying to make payments, you are definitely going to get the Naira option to make payments, right? If you are joining us from UK, you are going to get the pounds option. If you're joining us from the US, you are going to get the card, um, dollar option. If you are joining us from Canada, you are going to get the Canadian option. So depending on the, your location, 
it's going to automatically pick the currency of that location and ask you to use that currency. Okay, I think I'm, someone is asking instrumental plan. All right, um, I'll still get to there. Yeah, but there's also an instrumental plan. You can decide to make the first payment to reserve your spot. But the expectation is that before you get, um, before the fourth of May that the classes start, you will make the complete payments, right? So um, I remove what it means is that you can decide to make 450,000 Naira now to reserve your spot. But before the 4th of May, you are expected to make the remaining 150,000 Naira to complete your payment, right? What if I'm joining from UK with a Nigeria VPN on Elvis? Elvis now, wow. <laughs> All right, amazing, amazing. So uh, uh, definitely we all know how VPN works. It's automatically going to pick your IP as if you are in Nigeria. So it means that you know your way around what you're talking about. So uh, we wouldn't get into that. But once it comes up, I don't know why my network is so, so slow. It's so, so slow. Once it comes up, you automatically just click on the option to put in your details. Let me try and change my internet. Please, one second. One second, please. <clears throat> okay, like I always tell people, try and take advantage of sessions like this. Remember, we said that it is only for the first 20 people to join these classes, right? And as we are speaking, people are already taking advantage of this exact first 20. So try and take advantage of it also and be able to get into the class with others. Okay? So once you've clicked on that option of um, cyber security, it's going to bring you to this spot. Okay, I think this is taking a while to, to start. So um, I'm going to continue. So generally, at that spot, you're just going to put the amount you are meant to pay, right? You are going to put the expected amount you are meant to pay. Remember I said you can pay the minimum deposit there, which is 450,000 Naira or so, depending on the currency you are making payments with. And then before the 4th of May, you are also expected to make the complete payment. Before the class is over, I'm going to play a couple of videos for us to see what the past students have to say, for us to be able to know, okay, this is what people that have passed through the system, their testimonial videos, so that we get to understand what they saw, and so we can know that it is not just us speaking. Okay. Fantastic. So if you have any question at this point, you are free to use the raise hand icon to ask your question and I'll ask you to speak or you are also free to drop your question in the chat box and I will pick it from there. Okay, so I've, I think I've, direct, I've answered a remote question of the installment plan where you also, um, if you want to make installment payments, you can use the first option of making the flat fee of possibly 450,000, then before the 4th of May, you make the complete payment. Okay. All right, so please, if you have any question, just use the raise hand icon. Okay, Elvis, I'm going to call on you first. I've asked you to unmute, I have the floor, Elvis. Yeah, good evening, everyone. Um, can you hear me? Yes, please, we can hear you. Okay, so I wanted to ask, um, you said this internship was going to be for three months. Um, I would have loved to know because I'm currently doing my master's currently in the UK in cybersecurity, but my first degree was just computer science. So when I got here, I, I realized that the, the, all my thoughts of cybersecurity was totally different from what it is in the real world. It was when I got here that I realized cyber security has different aspects. I thought it's just they want something like the way you have like a software engineer. So most of the things you mentioned here, they've actually taught us in school. We've used some tools like we've used TryHack Me, we've used Wireshark. We are currently using Kali right now for Bob Shields, Nmap and the rest. But then you know the way school is now. After 
they teach in class, it's expected that you should just go and still develop yourself. And I've not really been able to understand. And that's why I'm looking for like internship where I could gain more practical knowledge on it. Because like I said, I'm still new into the system, but most of the things you guys covered here are things I already know from my last semester and this semester. So I want to know what exactly are we to, are we covering in the space of these three months? Because what we covered last semester and this semester, they are like 70% practical and just few. Sorry, they are like 70% theoretical and just few. We are practical based. So if I'm to pay 500 pounds, I want to know, couple with the fact that in UK here now, you can't get a job. You can't just finish school and get a cyber security job because they said you have to get one clearance stuff. They will tell you you must have stayed at least three years in the UK before you can dive into the cyber security sector. That's why I know most of my colleagues said I finished before me. I came in last year. I know a couple of people that came in two, three years before I came. And they told me on how they had to start with, um, what is it called? They had to start with IT support jobs. Yeah, because it's a normal policy here in the UK. They don't give jobs to new people. Like you must have been here for like three years and you get one, is it police clearance? I can't remember what they call it, but just the clearance you get before you could start working. So you, from what we said, you said, if you guys broke someone, if we do everything that you teach us and we follow all your rules, that you'll be able to get us jobs. So I want to be sure. I want to be sure because when I came into the, new, the UK newly, I, I think I saw Adiza Suleiman as I then, either September or October last year, when I spoke with him, he said, you guys, internal, internal analytics, you guys are not doing cyber security internships. He told me about um, data analysts. Yeah, so it was just like last week that I got to ask and you guys said like there was an opening now for cyber security. So I want to know now, are you guys assuring us of getting jobs based on the results you have with other internships you've held in other sectors? Because I know when I came newly, I was looking for where to just attach. Let me just be gaining some practical knowledge because in school, it's obviously, it's not everything you gain in school. There are things you can gain in internships that you can't learn in the classroom. And like CV review, preparation for... Prepare, um, CV review, preparation for interviews, your lecturers won't teach you that. So I want to know now if the job and your your previous students you have are actually people in cyber security too, too that you've actually gotten jobs for, or you are saying this based on your experience you have with students you've actually trained in other aspects like data analytics. So that's my question. I want to be sure on what I'm doing before I get into it because I've had many people say, they studied cyber. So we even say if they had known, they would have studied project management or something easier. And uh, cyber security now you need to do a lot of trainings, a lot of certifications, and all of that. So I want to be sure of what I'm getting into because five hundred pounds is actually a huge amount of money. Yeah, but it's it won't be huge compared to the training and other benefits that you're offering. So I need to be sure first before I know if I'm going to proceed with this or if I'm going to be backing out. Thank you. That's my question. All right. Can you make, thank you so much for that, Evis. Please confirm yeah. that you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. All right. Um, so um, your question, I, I love the fact that you mentioned that you've checked in before now. And you notice yeah. that we were not offering cyber security. So yeah. cyber security is just a course that we started recently. It should be in February. That was okay. the first cohort. Okay. Right. And okay. Well, we just don't we don't jump into um areas without first understanding what we are trying to get ourselves into. So okay. I'm going to paint some scenarios for you. Um, I have I have a friend that transitioned okay. directly into cyber security from Nigeria straight to UK, right? Okay. And this friend of mine, um, how he was, he was in Nigeria when he started doing some of these remote um, jobs for companies out, yeah. outside there, right? Okay. And all these things stems from the quality that you are bringing in and the experience level that you are also going to showcase to them, right? <clears throat> so at the moment, though we have our first 
<clears throat> at the moment, though that we still have our first cohort in class, but I'm telling you from prior experience that you can get job in UK depending on your skill level as at that point in time. So, you know, um, companies can give you leverage when they know what you are bringing on board, but they may not be willing to do all those things for you. If you are coming to get the job and you have zero knowledge of how to be practical in the aspect of cybersecurity, you are coming okay. to cybersecurity, you not understand what networking is all about. They are okay. going to feel like, oh, this person is just going to take us a lot of time. And that's why Ponam told you that you need to have all those long period of time. Yeah, even though we have testimonials already trickling in in other programs, at the moment, our first set in cybersecurity are still in class. We will have close to 30 people, uh, close to 50 people currently in class, right? So they are currently undergoing training. And you know, cybersecurity is not an area where you just learn introduction to cybersecurity and you can easily get a job. No, it's not. It doesn't function that way. So cybersecurity actually uh, is an area where you get to, you know, have that full training, learn the basics from the basics to climb to the midpoint, and then learn how to use necessary tools. Like you mentioned, learn how to use Wireshark, Bob Suit, and <clears throat> Zap to be able to intercept and prevent threats. So at yeah. the point that you are fully skilled in all this area, I know for Canada, for Canada, there is no report request for um, police reports. But for UK, I can't confirm or um, or confirm that at this point whether that could police report is actually what is very very necessary or whether it is what is used to deter people from getting into that ecosystem. Just like what people always tell you that this myth that exists that for you to get a job in UK, you need UK job experience. Or for you to get a job in Canada, you need Canadian job experience. That is just a myth, right? It is just okay. a myth. So, so far okay. as you can um, have evidence to show that you have all these areas that you worked in the areas of cybersecurity, and that is what we are offering you. Because our courses are not just theoretical, like normal um, master's program or PhD class. They are fully practical, where on each day you come to class, you are working on a case study. And that means by the time you are done with your three months program and your one month internship, you have close to five to 10 projects that you've worked on relating to cybersecurity. So all these things, they are what recruiters are going to look at and say, okay, Elvis is already an experienced cybersecurity person because you have this, you have that, right? So we provide you case studies from the financial sector, case study from the health, case study from um, energy, where you get to practice them. So it's as good as saying that you, Elvis, has worked in the energy sector, right? Because you have that data from the energy sector that you have worked in. So basically, these are things that will help you to build up and put in your portfolio so that will make sure that at any point, any recruiter is trying to have conversations with you, you can confidently defend and you know answer yourself. So at this point, our first set in cybersecurity, they are still in class, but we have numerous other programs where we have amazing testimonials. So I'm going to play a video from someone so that we can um, you know, better understand this. I'm going to play a video from ICMAT. So ICMAT was able to transition as a full-time housewife into the tech ecosystem. Right, so I am going to share my screen. It is coming up right now, so that we also get to understand that these things are possible. Oh, internet is interrupted. Okay, it is still coming up, please. But Elvis, I don't know if I answered your question. Hi, Elvis, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm still here. Um, but you've not really answered me directly because first semester I did three months. Three months is roughly twelve weeks you get, but then, but the knowledge I gained in the three week in the three months of my first semester is not what I could use to go to any employer right now. You get my point. So if you're also offering me the three weeks, my I paid I paid about nineteen k to study cyber security here, but then in what they've taught me in two semesters, I am not still fully ready. Like at times I feel like I wasted money. You get so paying nineteen k and first semester, one of the courses they were teaching us about wireless networks, they taught us about all these intrusion devices, honeypot, all of that. 
So you get, but that's not what's, if you go for an interview now, that's not what, they, they, nobody will ask you what is honey pots in an interview. Most times it's normal, real case, life, life, life based scenarios you get. So if I'm doing, I did like two semesters, two semesters is about six months roughly. Yeah, I'll be finishing my second semester next week. And then from now till September, I'll be doing my dissertation. And that's why I, I saw this opportunity as a great one for me to still study while I'm doing my dissertation. So my point is, if in, can you still hear me? Yes, I can hear you, obviously. Please go okay, on. so my point is now, if in six months, six months of lecture or in one year of studying, I'm still not well equipped. So I want to know what are those things now? Because like I told you, they already introduced us to Wireshark. Currently in this second semester, I mean, now we are doing a course because it's ethical hacking. Ethical hacking, that's what they taught us how to use Zap, Bob Field, how to use Nmap and the rest of that. We use it in Kali. We also use VMware. So that's why I said most of these things you guys said are things that I'm really kind of familiar with. So that will not say I'm strong, but they are not really new terms. Like they are not really new words to me. I, I am really familiar with most of these things you guys said. So I, I, I want to know now, what is what exactly are you offering? Is it at the end of and at the end of it you have recruiters that will come in and you have recruiters that will come in and at the end of the day you will help us get a job or because let's say for instance now if you have partnership with any company that from time to time like you said like from time to time they can come and ask because from my experience I was even thinking. I was even thinking of maybe going for a boot camp on data on what is it called? This um data analytics or so. Uh -huh. I, want, I was thinking of going to a boot camp on that or a boot camp in project management just so I can stay for the three years and build and work, earn money. Then in that three years, so I'm practically learning, going for certifications, building my CV, and still diving deep into the cyber security field. So is it that if we finish this in internship now, you will help us get a job or you, you will just give us hands-on training, then we'll develop ourselves and we'll fall back to going to apply for jobs and again and see hearing stuff like, okay, well, you can't get because I've applied in many places. Hi, Best of my all. name is and um, okay. I was with the match code internally and Joining oh, wait, that, has that's been not supposed to play now. Sorry about that. So far. You know, for like me, someone coming business. from a background of... Okay. So like I was saying, is it that you're going to help us get a job? Do you have recruiters? Do you have people in cybersecurity that you can say, okay, we can beat you under your chest and say, if you learn 90 or 95% of what you are going to be teaching you, if we help you review your CV, if we prepare you for all these in for all these interviews, are you assuring us that we will get jobs, or you are just helping us gain gain more knowledge on cybersecurity and we we'll still fall back to having to wait for three years? Because I don't see any reason why I would want to finish my school and I'll go into internship if I'm not set. I'm if I'm not certain that I'll be getting a job after that. Yeah, because it's a job factor. I told you in UK here. Yeah, I don't know about I don't know about Canada or US. In UK here, nobody will give you a role in cyber security. I have people that came in like two, three years before me. All of them now they are into project management. They are into um, IT support. Most of them work with NHS, and because you know at the end of the day you still need to get a sponsor job to remain in the UK. So all these things are what I want to try to understand. Let not be that okay. We'll just pay the money. Uh, maybe people in Nigeria now, in US or Canada, they might not face it. But me, I'm saying from the aspect of me living in the UK. So I want to know what exactly are you offering us? Is it that after your training, we'll just be there on God, hoping to get a job one day? Or you actually are showing us that you actually have partnership with some companies that will come to you and say, okay, you just finished your male cohorts. Do you have good people here that you can recommend to us to come for interviews? Are you going to be offering that as well? Or you're not sure for now, since your first cohort in February just, they are still in class. All right. Um, thank you so much for that, Elvis. So one assurance that, that we have partnership with recruiters 
that come to us from time to time to ask for specific role-based people, right? So we've not positioned ourselves in respect to um, bringing our cybersecurity to them because we are still having our first cybersecurity guys still in training. But our assurance that I'm giving you is also that once this training is completed, we have also positioned ourselves to be able to provide people from in-house to them for in job interviews. Now, you asking for specific job, uh, specific, specific assurance is now you pushing, um, I don't know how to put it, an entire hand because this is just like saying um, you need assurance to someone that helped you come into UK that once you are done with your master's, they are going to get a sponsored jobs, right? Now, these things exist. For example, now our data engineering data analysts, we give these assurances for are there people that do not get these jobs? Yes. Are there people that get it? Yes. And it boils down to individuals most time because we have job application trackers where we have even told people that we've trained on a weekly basis, you have to apply to up to 100 for 20 or 100 jobs every week. But you end up seeing people apply to just five jobs in a week and they expect things to happen. So from data that we've reviewed from World Economic Forum reports, these things is not um, just applied to three jobs in a week and then you get a job. We know the economy that we are constantly in. So on day-to-day -day basis, people are expected to at least apply to 10 to 20 jobs every day, 10 to 20 jobs. And an assurance that we are giving you is that if you do all these things that we are going to walk you through, the mentorship session, the CV review session, the job application session, is that you are going to get one job interview after you are done training with us. It is a full assurance because it's something that we have constantly experienced over the past four years. But the problem is this now. We have students that in a week, they've not done any job application. If recruiters reach out to us, we are definitely going to position people that we've seen that are applying to this. And those other people that are not applying to jobs and sitting down, will now come and say, oh, I finished, I did not get any interview. Right? So it, boils, it still boils down to our personal push for all these things. We are going to equip you with the necessary skill, competency, and employability services that you need, but also a hundred, a, a, there is a full expectation from your own side to be able to push for these things, and not just from the angle of relax and say, oh, are we assuring you that you are going to be um, pulled from the pool to job, interview, uh, job interviews, right? Once you've done everything that we asked you to do, do the job applications that we asked you to do 10 to 20 every week, every day, we are assuring you of one job interview once you are done training with us. Okay, so um, I want to play what Ipmat said. Because, um, she okay, sorry, first, sorry, sorry. I have, uh, I have, one, last, I have one last but, question. I have one last question before you play the video. Now, like I said, all right. Like I said, in cybersecurity in the UK, yeah, I don't know if you've made your findings or if you still plan to make your findings. But cybersecurity in the UK, yeah, you need three years. Like it's part of the criteria you must have lived in the UK. The same way some some people will tell you that they, you need to have UK experience, UK job experience. Some people now will tell you you have you need to have UK, but cybersecurity specifically, you must have lived there for three years. So how do I bypass that? I don't know if maybe you don't understand or if you could help me ask around just to be sure. I understand the hundred percent Elvis. I understand the hundred percent. It's just like uh, a nurse moving from Nigeria to UK. When you get to UK, you still have to do some necessary certification that pertains to that skilled area that you are trying to get into. There are some areas that you want to get into cybersecurity and they will require you to have that exact role. But for you to start off in the cybersecurity world, it is not a, a necessary uh, requisition for you to have that three years, right? So there are startup roles that exist in cybersecurity that you can easily start yourself up with, right? Why keep pushing to you get the necessary timeline to get the higher areas? If um, someone is trying to get into um, things like, um, let's say, uh, medicine, you can't just move from being doing housemanship to jump into becoming a specialist, right? There are specific uh, intervals that all these things follows. So if you are trying to get into the um, cybersecurity area, 
is still going to start with all those lower cadre cyber security and gradually also move up from there, right? All this you are going to achieve within that specific time. So when we say we are going to assure you one interview or um, one cyber security interview, it's not that you are going to be invited to be the CISO of a company, right? But definitely you are going to get roles that relate to security and cyber analysts, right? And these things are, you know, this is, this is also applicable to some of the things that we face in other areas. People will tell you, for you to get into data analytics, you need, um, you need to have two years experience in UK for you to practice. But all these are um, needs. Because for you to practice, you just need the competency and skill. And you will definitely get into that exact core area and gradually climb up the ladder. Now, these are things that we also offer in our mentorship programs where we teach about job hopping, right? For example, you've got into your first cyber um, security internship role. And from there, you job hopped into another role. And gradually, you built up all those things that are needed. And all this is because uh, we know how the terrain works out there. So we brought people that have experienced this to walk people through how to do all this, right? So we are assuring you, once you get into our cybersecurity program and you are done with all, everything that is needed of you, we are assuring you one job interview to get into the cybersecurity job field out there. Hi, Elvis. I don't know if that is clear. Yeah, that is clear. All right, thank you so much. Hi, Michael. I think uh, maybe I'll take you before we go on with others. Hi, Michael, you have the floor. I've asked you to unmute. Hi, Michael, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, please go ahead. All right, uh, I think, uh, thank you very much for giving us this uh, platform to be able to understand the cyber security aspect when it comes to joining 10 analytics here. Um, previously before now, I've done a business analytics, business analysis and a, a bit of a, a project management. And now I just felt, okay, let me come into the cyber security aspect and see what it really entails. Uh, I, I'm just finding out, is there any way I could, uh, it could be linked, the cyber security, business analysis, is there a link between these two fields or basically are they just, is there any way it can be linked together? You know, using an idea you gathered from this aspect and also adding it up to what you have in cyber security in the aspect of building up your CV and securing a job. That is where I'm trying to get the my question from. So I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to Okay. Yes, I understand you perfectly, Michael. So yeah. your question is that is there um, basically whether there are transferable skills from business analysis to cyber security. Yeah, right? like building, so building up your CV now. Can the CV um, did you do the training with no no not not with uh, 10 analytics. Not with 10 oh, analytics. Okay, yeah. okay. So I can't uh, yeah, I can't confidently speak on the tools that you learned. Um, with the training institute, right? But for our own business analysis program, because we structure it in a way that it is data business analysis, you get to learn Excel, you get to learn Power BI, you get to learn SQL. Like, so SQL is something that, that SQL, structured query language, is something yeah, that yeah. has that little transferable language from business analysis to the other side, right? So for our own business analysis, we get to learn these core data tools before okay. you not enter into learning about Agile, okay. learning about Scrum, learning about um, SWOT analysis, learning the entire business analysis, okay, um, elicitation method, project initiation, and as case may be. But we started up with learning those initial tools, Excel, Power BI, and SQL. So yeah. if you have this knowledge in the place that you learned your business analysis, yeah. then there are definitely transferable skills that you are going to move to um, cyber security. And also, for business analysis, there is what we call process mapping, mm -hmm. right? So if mm -hmm. you learn process mapping in business analysis, you already have that um, transferable skill. 
because in the cyber world, you still have to map your processes, uh, the process around what you, the threat that is coming or how you want to defend an attack. You're going to still process, map all this area. So these are basic transferable skills that you can move from your BA knowledge into cybersecurity. I don't know if that makes sense to you, Michael. Yeah, it, it makes sense. Just in, in addition, uh, is there any way the, the, the CV, okay, my CV can be built in a way that it captures both a business analyst role and a cybersecurity role? Is it possible? Of course. Yeah, of course, it's, it's, it is possible. It is okay. possible. So the way we structure our CV is because we have people that uh, possibly this person was in the bank and the person may be a customer service person, and now the person is trying to transition into business mm -hmm. analysis. Mm -hmm. So because in the bank, you get to do what we um, call interact with customers, that still serves as a listation. So instead of saying they do work as a customer service person, you can, you can just try um, call, recoin the work to be a business analyst that was eliciting information from customers. So even though they're in the bank, we have now transitioned their CV to look like they also we are serving as a business analyst why they were in that exact role. Okay. So okay. what we do is basically we look at your uh, historical background and we can now be able to teach you how you can now transition your CV to transfer some skills that you've learned before into the present role that you're trying to transition into. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for that, Michael. All right, so if you are just here and you have questions, please use the raise hand icon and we are going to ask you to unmute to speak or you can um, drop your question in the chat box and we are going to pick it up from there. While we are waiting for that, let me play this video from Ipmax so that we get to understand um, some things that we are talking about. And, um... I was with the match code in Analytics, and joining Analytics has been the best decision so far. You know, for me, someone coming from a background of full housewife, because I had to stay back home to look after my child for four years, and then wanting to break into something new, wanting to go back into work into the workforce, you know, wanting to place myself in the society for better job opportunities. So it was a lot. And then I'm glad that Tenalytics came along and then they presented me with so many opportunities right in front of me, better opportunities. And then I'm glad I took it. And then <clears throat> uh, also the advice of do not sell yourself short that if it's always the it is very, very valid because place yourself right, you know, don't sell yourself short. It's a very, very, very valid advice. You know, in Tenalytics, they will hold your hands like a child you know through through the models you have to you have the opportunity to go back and study you have the opportunity to go back and practice you have the opportunity to ask questions you know we have people you can always go back to even outside of class class hours it's, it's the most amazing experience so far really and then another thing is the interview prep guys that is another very important thing I did my interview prep with Mr. Mohammed and it was the best decision ever because he was like he saw into the future, he knew what was going to be asked. And I'm glad that I took, I wrote down all the things he mentioned, I went back to practice and then when it was time for the interview, it was like everything he was mentioning, everything he mentioned, it was just, they kept on. And then when I was answering those questions, I was so confident, you know, because I already practiced. I did an Excel test, I did a math test and then they were really impressed. And another thing is, guys, it may not come as fast as you expect. Definitely, you are going to get some no's and then you may begin to think you're not good enough. You are good enough, yes. The no's will come, but always take it as a basis for learning and development because after every interview where I got a no, I always make sure I get a personal feedback. So I work on those feedbacks for my next interviews. And yes, it worked. It really worked for me. because I got my first job three months into the program my first job but I couldn't take up the job because I was still, there was a student and I was only really eligible to do to work 20 hours so I couldn't take up the job three months later I got two jobs 
with full visa sponsorship. And guys, all the other knows before the two jobs. prepared me for the yeses I got. So yes, the no's will come, but do not give up because you always have the analytics to go back to. They are the best, best, and the best thing that ever happened to me. And then, yes, um, and they are the most affordable. The most affordable one I've come across so far. And that's a very good advantage. So yes, the analytics for the win. <laughs> Hi everyone. All right, amazing, amazing. So if you heard what Ikmat said, she was able to, she was able to transition from a full housewife to becoming a full-fledged tech sis. And her own transition was amazing because she got some roles while she was still in class, while she was still studying I mean, in school. And she was never able to take it up because of limitations in working hours. And one month after she was done again, she got two roles. And at this point, she now had the liberty to select the one that she wants to go for. So uh, this is still the question time. So if you have any question for me, you can use the raise hand icon and ask question, or you can drop it in the chat box. Remember, our next cohort is starting 4th of May. That is 4th of May. And the payment is seven, um, $600. Seven hundred and fifty Canadian dollars, four hundred seventy-five euro, five hundred pounds or six hundred thousand naira, all discounted, for you to get into this exact cyber security field, and the classes on, runs on Saturdays from eleven a.m. to two p.m. West African time, and on Sunday from two p.m to 5 p.m. West African time. So what are you still waiting for? Um, these are a couple of um, ads that we've been on. Analytics helps Africans across four continents love tech jobs. So when you get this slide, you can always watch all this, okay? So these things always look impossible or it is done, right? When we speak about these things, it always sounds impossible until you experience it personally. That's when you get to know that these things are possible. Now, there's this amazing story that we have about Ini Apabio, right? So this is a long message that Ini sent to us after he got his own um, you know, job. Now, the funny thing about Ini's story is that Ini went for an interview for a manager role. On getting to that exact place, Ini was offered a CEO role after they saw what he has to offer. And it's not that he don't be applying um, to places before now. What he even said is that we unlocked him to give him the necessary skills for him to start pushing. Imagine going for a managerial interview and you are offered a CEO role. Now, if you talk or uh, say these things out there, people will definitely ask, uh, is it possible? But these are things that we have experienced. These are things that people have come back to tell us. And you don't really have to worry whether you have a technical background, right? Because even Joshua on this call did not study cybersecurity, but today he's a cybersecurity expert with one of the top most banks in Africa. And we have a couple of success stories from people that have also experienced this. So I want you to uh, you know, fill in the attendance form so that once this call is over, my colleagues are going to send this slide to you and also the recording of this session. So if you have any question, please feel free to use the raise hand icon and we are going to call you. Or you can drop your question in the chat box and we are going to pick it up from there. Okay, we still have a couple of people on the call. We've had Michael, we've had um, Elvis, we have um, somewhere on the call, we have Chizzy, we have Chukwemeka, hi Nemsik, we have Emmanuel, hi Friday, we have Godwin, goodness, Harry, iPhone, Girardi, Francis, 
Oye Bimpe, Semito, Be, Steven Taiwo, and Zoom user. If you have any question, please use the raise hand icon and we are going to call you or you can drop your question in the chat box and we are going to pick it up from there. Any question from anyone? Remember, the discount is not for everyone. It's just meant for the first 20 people to join this exact program. So please try and take advantage of it so that not when you call, you are going to get um, the talk like, oh, the 20 slots is filled. Try to take advantage of it now that is here so that you can get into the tech ecosystem. Okay, I don't know if there are uh, any question. Hi, Joshua, are you still there? Hi, Joshua, are you there? Hi, Joshua. Okay, so I don't know if Joshua is still on the call. I wanted Joshua to give his closing remarks before we call it a day. All right, so I'm going to leave you with this. What are you still waiting for? Remember, the time that you are, the best time to get into tech is yesterday, and the next best time is today. You can't keep pushing it forward. Uh, last year, we offered discounts, 50% discounts for International Women's Day, and it's, it's, uh, the price should be around 150,000 Naira. This year, we offered that same discount, 50% discount, and the pricing was 450,000 Naira. Now we are offering a 33% discount and it is 600,000 Naira. Tomorrow, the discount may be there, but the financial amount may still have gone up. So I always advise people to take advantage of the um, pricing they meet at every point in time. You can you, you also have the opportunity to defer. So that means you can make payments now that you want to start the classes in June instead of starting in May, right? So you're making payments, you've locked down the exact pricing that is currently on, but you want to start your classes in May, in, in June, I mean, that option is also available. Okay, so in the absence of any other thing, we are going to call it a day. So I can't wait to see you guys in class. Elvis, Michael, I can't wait to have you guys in class. Thank you guys so much for joining us. And this is where we round off for today. Thank you once more and cheers. See you next time. Bye for now, guys.